I think we, last time we spoke, we talked about looking at the ACL. Yes, yes. Whoa. Now, I do not value this one little bit as a reliable test, but I always look because I get asked to look a lot more knees than I should, you know, a lot more knees than when it's relevant. And so I've got the time. And so I just look, look at the ACL. Let me ask you this. You are in a sagittal um, uh, t t tom t tomograph. You're, 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 you're long axis patellar tendon. But are I'm you medial or lateral from the patellar tendon or are you mid sagittal uh, on the on the leg? Now, I, I'm probably somewhere around. Uh, oh, I've gone and hang on. I'm just going to have to bail. For a second, okay. Because of the way my system works, because right? I want to pull up a second box to search for something else while that. So I'm good. This can come back. Uh, I'm just going to type in uh, some somewhere off screen. So you, sorry, you won't be able to see it. Uh, I'm going to try and find something that I scanned a few months ago. Uh, Bear with me. This is tricky. Well, it's not tricky. I'm just not really good at it. I can, um, <laughs> you know, I, though you think you're not good at it, your head is turning like you have multiple displays up there. So you look like yeah, you're yeah. an air traffic controller the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's, a, that's a shame. I haven't I got a picture. Uh, it's not giving me any movies for ACLs, which means that my system is not working at 100% of its its value. Okay, you're going to have to just take my word for it. This is a normal one. And while you're bit. while you're doing that, you can't see my my mouse overlying on it, can you? Wh wh where you are? Uh, let me have a look. No. Okay. Um, under the 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 collagen of the patellar tendon, there's a dark yep. area that my mind would say that's Hoffa's fat pad. Yeah. Oh, that, this that, thing. The, and and uh, the next hyper echoic or bright surface, that is the beginning of the joint capsule. Mm, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I would say so. I don't really pay a lot of attention to that. But yes. But down at the bottom, when we're oblique, that dark area is what you're referring to as ACL. Yeah, yeah. All right. And and I say it's it's not reliable. I've I've had patients in who I know have an ACL rupture, and I've not been able to get something to look significantly different from that, and and vice versa. However, I did see a lot of fluid, and this was ugly on a patient I had a few months ago, about eight months ago actually, and then. Uh, and when I looked at the back, which I haven't taken a video for on this clip, but I, I like to look when I look when I scan the back of the knee, I drop yes. the drop right down and get the uh, uh, the, the space between the two uh, 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 condyles. I get uh, I, I get that as a picture. And if you look really carefully on a nice patient, you can see uh, where the uh, PCL is attaching proximally because you can follow the PCL up in short axis, and then you can make a guess of where the ACL is on the other side. And uh, and I saw a case where in both those cases, right here at the front and at the back, it, it all looked a little bit abnormal. And so that patient recently had an MRI and they came back as being ACL rupture as well. So and by abnormal, you're saying there, it, there was a darker characteristic around was, that tissue there that, was some that, fluid around there and, I, and, and the tissue just didn't look as good as this i will try and dig out the pictures at some stage and maybe next time i'll show you 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 say you you dropped the 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 frequency down when you went there or what did you yeah. say you dropped the doppler down i didn't well, no the, no the frequency i'll yeah, always okay. whenever you're looking for this you always have it at the lowest or, or on on the scanners i use the best at this step on, at the lowest, you have to drop the frequency down before you get any sort of reasonable picture at this step. In, do you do in, that by dragging? Point. Do you do that by dragging the focus uh, off to the right down, or do you do that by 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 by, by making on, a change? On, on our scanners, you have uh, frequency adjustment. Okay.
so is, is a separate toggle. Right. You know, because, uh, you, you can you can bring the the focus down. It's scanner by scanner how di how much difference it makes. All right. So uh, on uh, the, this was done on quite a powerful, relatively modern scanner. So uh, you can get away you get away without making everything perfect. When you anyway, did so say when when you said it looked pathological, um, it it yeah. and, and that it looked like fluid. Were we talking that at that resolution we can't see it clear like a baker's cyst? Yeah. It, it it we we can't differentiate it. It just didn't look gray like blood. It 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 yeah. just looked darker. Yeah, you uh, at at those sorts of depth, you're making yeah. rough guesses okay. rather than uh, uh, sort of firm commitments to things. You see, uh, depend depend on on the situation and and what you're looking through. But both the popliteal fossa and the anterior knee, uh, half of pad, pad, are not ideal candidates for shining sound through. So, uh, would this exist like after you've just cleared the popliteal uh, bursa, or or for Baker's, you, you you've gone past medial uh, gastroc and semimembranosus, and then you've pulled this? Wh wh where is it in your scan, or are you just saying whatever the spirit moves you? you you're you, I just, you're, you're doing I, this when I look at. It, when I look at the back of a knee, I'm, you know, the first thing I do is cast my eye over the uh, uh, over the muscles and tendons, uh, looking yes. for things like Baker cyst, and just generally looking to see what's going on there. Yes, uh, and then I tend to look through the joint line uh, in um, in long in, in long section. Yes, uh, to look for the uh, typically to just look, but also to look specifically for the root of the PCL. And then, because uh, you see, you see the the uh, insertion of the PCL quite well in most patients. They say with the ACL, uh, if you have the uh, the probe pointing slightly lateral, you're in sagittal, but you're slightly leaning the top of the probe outwards, and then you feather through, looking for that plane that captures the ACL. That's how I do that part. And then on the uh, on, on the back with the PCL, it's the opposite direction. You feather the probe sort of pointing slightly medially uh, to get the best angle on that. Very good. So, but they don't, it doesn't really have much value in terms of uh, uh, sort of diagnostic, but when, when you, it's very nice when you see it and it's, uh, and, and, and if you're going to be looking around there anyway, yes, then I just look for it. And I look for these things, and you see a lot of cysts, a lot of uh, a lot of other things, which can be relevant, not always, but it's it's just part of of you looking. Now this is a funny one. Uh, have you got the screen up? Can you yes, see I me? Do. Can you see me pasting through this? Now you're going to need to know where it is because it just looks like a, a mush. This is a long. This is the fifth metata uh, metatarsal. So this okay. is the outside of the foot, and this patient presented with a lump on their at the, the base of their fifth metatarsal, <clears throat> and they didn't have a lump there. And so I had a little think about it, and I noticed that this very bright material just running up the side of the metatarsal here. We are short axis on the metatarsal, and it's the yes. fifth metatarsal, and you're lateral. Yes. Um, okay. And I'm lateral there. And you just see that material is really bright. Yes. And and then there's a little dark line that goes all the way through it. Yeah. Yes, almost like and a this, vessel of some sort. Yeah. And then this is the other side. And you see that same tissue is not so bright. It's dark here. By the yeah. other side, you mean contralateral extremity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's on the uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That is uh, abducted di digiti minimi. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's a relatively normal looking one. Yes, and back here is a not normal one looking uh, one. Uh, 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 fatty atrophied or or exactly or, that. Exactly. What that. about that? And what gives you that? In extensive oh, digital time don't, minimum. Don't take me back there, John. <laughs> well, well, this was the point. This was fatty atrophy, and uh, the patient didn't have a lump, 
what they your uh, your fifth metatarsal sticks out anyway. Yes. But with the muscle next to it atrophied, it looks like a lump. And this muscle atrophies for a very specific reason, which is uh, an entrapment of Baxter's nerve. Uh, I wouldn't have given you that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even think I would have gotten that on multiple choice, John. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, well, it's 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 a funny thing because I see a lot of plantar fasciitis. Yes. Yeah, and and plantar fasciitis, and and the patient had plantar fasciitis, but there is a a, a condition which mimics it. Which is an entrapment of the, I think it's the first branch of the first uh, little branch of, of, of the lateral branch of the uh, uh, posterior tibial nerve as it comes around into the foot. So it's the it's the plantar nerve, yeah. uh, and it's the lateral lateral one. Lateral so it's a little plantar. branch. Yeah, and it yeah. And, and it drops off, and it supplies the heel. So so it, it uh, an entrapment of it or compression of it will give you heel pain that mimics plantar fasciitis. Yes, but it's okay. also common, it's not common at all, but when it happens, it's also associated with plantar fasciitis because that causes, or sometimes causes the compression. When it does, it sometimes, it's uh, because that nerve happens to go all the way across the foot and supply the fifth, uh, the uh, abductor digiti minimi, yeah. and sometimes the... Uh, uh, quadratus uh, muscle Plante. in the foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so those and and in this patient, both of those were atrophied. What about that? No yeah. sensory change. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think it's got a sensor. Uh, it, it it probably has sensory branch in the. Uh, I'm I'm not quite sure yeah. about that side of things. But anyway, that was that was the story, and and it was like, but the patient had had plantar fasciitis pain for ages, but turned up because of the lump. <laughs> wow so, so that 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 was that was a, a, is... a plan to brighten your day and this is <laughs> this is um i'm, I'm going to show you some other atrophied muscles uh but this is the sort of tendon aponeurosis type material and it will look like this on a scan when the muscle is atrophied it stands out it's like the reverse of uh it's it's, it's like when you get your black and white image turned right. round. right so the and muscle the, these the days, negative the muscle, of it yeah, the muscles is all are all bright, and the tendon tendon tissue is uh, is relatively dark. Very, very relevant. It rel yeah. it's relevant to echo signature because it allows you to go. You know, I, I would imagine that with a little bit of compression, it would it, it would have made you go. That's not a vessel, or your eyes would have said that's not a vessel just because of the way it is, or that that, yeah. that it's not located there. But that's the that's that that's the central aponeurosa. Uh, that, yeah. That's like a tendon. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. And this is the patient with this is tibialis anterior, and you recognize the same sort of story. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And this you, this I see quite quite regularly in older folk. Uh but also in this in this case you'd get a, a mild foot drop. Do you is is neurogenic or structural where it breaks uh the the, the ptt uh although you say the anterior yeah to to, to be able to anterior yeah 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 huh. so, very overlooked muscle certainly in my practice i keep having to remind myself to check it <laughs> but, but you get it it's close to the tibia on the anterior border yeah it's right next to it it appears yeah. So that that just uh, and and obviously uh, I've been paying just a bit more attention recently to uh, uh, to the texture of older people's muscles and trying to sort of gauge the relevance of it because you you often when you're looking at a foot you see a degree of wasting in the intrinsic muscles between the metatarsals they they seem to go with age to a certain extent. As a, uh, so a as a general distribution, but not yeah. as a single site of of whiteness, is that right? Yeah. Or yes, there are lots of uh, you know they'll all be you know in in a young fit person. There's lots lots of muscle in the yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in uh, between the metatar uh, metatarsals uh, often, and as as you look at a lot of older people, there just really isn't, and I haven't yet huh. found an explanation for that, but. 
I wonder if that could uh, motivate some of us working with that population to, to, to have them go back to picking up socks with their toes, if for no other reason, but just to uh, reawaken that they do have individual movements. Because I think that as they start to have that diabetic, um, you know, response and, and the peripheral neuropathy, I doubt if they're getting proprioceptive input like athletes are from every yeah. one of those intrinsics. Fascinating. Yeah. So I suspect it, 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 it's, you know, probably not study for us because we're so, so old, but, it, but it's, <laughs> it's something that some of my younger colleagues could look right. at because I think you'd need to do some, uh, uh, it's the sort of thing, if I had the time and the support, I would uh, try, maybe try some longitudinal studies and just look at some population things and, and try to measure those, the, the volumes of these of these muscles. But that's, that's some, something uh, to work on as time goes by. Uh, I'll see how much energy I have for that sort of thing in the in the years to come. <laughs> oh, hey, I saw one of those just this week. Yeah, but tell me more about it. Tell me, tell me what you were going to share, other than what is it, calcium hydroxy appetite? There, uh, yeah. And it I, wasn't, look- I wasn't really get, the the thing. The thing that caught my eye with this because I see a lot of this is what's happening with that little bit at there. You see the little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it through. Where are we? Come on. Come back. Where's my... Pick off it. Get back on it. There we go. Let's start it here and drag it through. So, so yeah, so you've got... That's a fairly normal appearance. The point when I find it... The thing that makes me think it's clinically relevant, because it sometimes isn't, is when it, it distorts the shape of the supraspinatus, typically. Yes. And so if you think about where you expect that curve to be... Right. ...the of this... When it indents there, those are the ones that I find uh, most clinically relevant. But then we go forward and you see that. See how the shape of it is completely yes. different. I think this is where, at a later stage, where it's bled in, uh, where it is broken out into the bursa. Yeah. So, so the natural history of these is that they, the, the calcium is within the tendon. It becomes softer. And then towards the end of its lifetime, it gets pushed out towards the bursa. And I think this is what's happening. It's it's been it's come out of a, a collection in the tendon that can it can have been for years. And then it's breaking out into and and passing. It hasn't got all the way into the bursa, but perhaps perhaps moving in the in the subbursal layer. Almost like a dermal expression of a whitehead or something like that that comes up from below and and this is the eruption yeah. is is the structure in your mind malleable what we're looking at there are you capable of of pushing that material around like if it were let's say grout between um tile i mean is it like toothpaste there or what is yes. it like hey my friend hey uh... <laughs> James, he's oh. supposed to be in bed. Ah, uh, yes. Well, hello there. Thank you for showing your face. <laughs> off you go. Off you go. I'll take you back. Go on. Off you go. Say good night. Close the door as you go through. Go on. Close the door. Bye. Bye, bye, buddy. Go on. Off you go, James. Close the door for me. <laughs> Because I see posterior shadowing here, I I, I I believe that the density makes me feel as though, I mean, obviously it can't get sound through very well. But in your opinion, if you pushed on that, how how hard would that be to go through with a needle? Uh, well, it, my, I don't know for certain because I didn't push a needle through this, but uh, uh, but I would expect that to be pretty soft because okay. it, it, isn't, it isn't really blocking the sound very much at all. You can see a picture behind there, and I've never even tried. So, are you thinking that that darkening um, is is a compromise in the tendon, or is that just a little bit of of reduction? No, no, in... this, this is this is this is just reduced. You can see in the, you, you can see the change underneath yeah, yeah. it in the bone. So it's so it's um, it, it's changing the whole signal in that area. Gotcha. So yes, it's, it's, and and it's quite a lot of calcium. Eh? So, but it's uh, but it but 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 just because it's. Uh, Hard makes will make a difference to how much uh, sound you lose because that will change the acoustic properties. But it's uh, but it's not the be all and end all. 
of of, of what uh, what changes the the reflectivity of it. The, just the density of the calcium. The calcium can be in a in a soft format relatively gotcha. and still be more reflective. Um, I think you started off with saying the 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 topography had it elevated more than you're used to and you're thinking now that part of that could be the eruption into the bursal space so that it's living above the actual fibers of the of the supraspinatus well this is this is the normal shape of a calcific deposit in a tendon there and this is a different shape Yeah, yeah 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 with a different density you can see you can see as I go through it, uh, depending on when you get towards the edges, you're still you're still getting a quite nice picture behind it. You see how the density yes. changes. Yes. As so, you've still got picture there within your slice. So, so I don't think this is actually go. You're, I don't think there's a mass underneath a mass of calcium underneath it. Yes. I think that is just a plane there. There was okay. a trick that a smart buddy once told me about Doppler and putting it on here to be able to see through it so that we don't we we're not using the the cool refining of 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 scientists um and 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 it wasn't relevant for that 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 smart guy to do that here. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. I I I I don't use uh uh I've I've heard of uh doing that. I never really had any cause to to mess around with the doctor other than to look for inflammation in these ones i know no, I sometimes think, they will I, do that to look I think at the way what, what, I was, what, what i was saying is that i think what, what you said is if you go to doppler it throws out that fill in underneath or it oh right it, yes. It, it, yes it allows you to see tissue on the other yes. side of this kind of stuff yes. a little bit better i don't i don't no, i they, don't have on the tip of my tongue why no the, the compounding uh yeah is, that uh, when when it's uh, this picture will be made up of signal that's that's coming from three directions. Yes. Whereas if if you switch on the color, you get a more faithful uh, one directional picture, which then allows you to pick out uh, whether uh, the shadowing that's caused more. I it, see. It, it makes the shadowing more more specific. Sorry, gotcha. I, I thought there's another trick that people sometimes use to look. Uh, at the way the color signal uh, is affected oh. by very small calcific things, which I, I forgot. That. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it anymore. I once <laughs> upon a time I used to know it. Uh, what have we got? Talking of Doppler, though, this is another use of Doppler. Uh, see what you think of this. Oh my land! Whoa! Whoa! Wow, that's like a one of those um, uh, aneurysms uh, where, where where that's like um, aging blood that's that that yeah. that's slopping around. Yes, but it's lovely the way the uh, yes the color the, the power of the color uh, <laughs> signal moves it, <laughs> and I was, and and it, and it, but the amount of movement changes with the the, the width of the box. So it, oh, it just is a second, John. I wasn't even looking at the relevance that you're telling me. What you're what, what what you're looking at is the ambient effect of the actual um sound from the from the probe and you're yes. watching it change the the the, the cellular movement. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. What about that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh so, yeah. my lad! T- tell I, me, tell me the story behind this. Well, it's it's, it's just a massive, uh, uh, messy-looking uh, 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 patella. Uh, what's the, what are they called? The big lump on 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 the front of the patella. A, oh, the pre-patella bursa. Uh, pre-patella bursa. Yeah, this yeah. is a huge pre-patella bursa full of sort of. Uh, gunk of some variety. I didn't stick a needle in it to take it out because it's not worth it. They they go away on their own. Uh, so, uh, but uh, but when I put the color on, which you do as a matter of course, whenever you see anything like that, just to make sure what? there's nothing crazy about it. What made you even do that, and how incredibly fascinating that is? Oh, it's, it's, it's it's a lovely way for utter, you know, because when you see something this texture. You cannot be absolutely sure it's a liquid. Unbelievable! And, uh, and, until that point where you do, uh, uh, 
where you put the color on and show that it moves. John, I want that. On. I I want that video, and I'll pay you for it. Because <laughs> I, I I I wanted just to be able to look at it again sometime and yeah, show yeah. the effect of that. <laughs> yeah. That's phenomenal. Well, I'll I'll send I'll send it across. <laughs> <laughs> I very much would, and. Um, give me an age. Was this person it, it, that that's not like uh, in uh, uh, infection, or we don't know what that complex no. fluid is? No, but it's not an infection. You 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 would see that straight away because the thing would be as red as a rhubarb. Gotcha. And so, and there was no vascularity. You know, there's no hypervascularity yeah. in the walls or anything like that. But what you're doing, you're putting the color on to make sure that this isn't some sort of mass that just looks like a a collection of rubbish. So let's talk a little bit about the physics of putting color on, because clearly there is a there there is a force that is coming out of that probe that is yes. causing a a more rapid movement of the of tissue under that probe. What what is that? Is that a different? Is that an overlying harmonic that they're using to? to, no. to, to it's just no, an what, increased power. No, uh, what it is is your your pulse. With the, the pulse that generates your your grey picture, yes, is, is three wavelengths. Sometimes less than three wavelengths. It's it's just a little uh, rattle almost of the uh, of the probe, and okay. uh, and that's a tiny pulse. So so even though it's quite a powerful pulse, it's this duty cycle. The amount of time that there is uh, energy going through any one spot on your screen is one ten thousandth of the overall time. Okay. So each pulse creates such a tiny force through there. A lot of force in a small space, but there's so little energy overall. Yes. When you have a Doppler signal, you have 10 waves. If you imagine drawing on a piece of paper. Yes. And there's sin it's a sinusoidal wave. Yes. Pulse, but it's 10 wave, generally about 10 wavelengths long. I hear you. And it goes out and then it comes back and then you send another one straight back after it. And that's what, and, and and it's the change in frequencies that returns. Fascinating. Do that. So, Absolutely so that fascinating. overall, there's a lot more force goes into that area, even though the, the pulses themselves are not as big as the pulse you send in your signal, because they're longer and it's a longer train of pulse, there's just more energy. And because it, it goes back and forth over that area relatively quickly, you generate a lot of or enough to move some fluids. It depends on how thick the fluid is. Absolutely brilliant. I tell you what, today, this has made living, this day, even more valuable. I, I, I feel, I feel everybody else who hasn't seen that or heard that yeah. have been cheated. Thank you, John. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that was, all right, I'm listening. And hello to who passed by. You were blurry. Yeah, but I like this blurry thing. It's quite good. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> anyway, do you know this what is, this is? Well, it it's it's it looks like the foot, the dorsal, or or or, or uh, the palmer hand. Oh, it's I know. The hand. Okay. This is this is Jupiter's. Okay. Now, what we're looking at is this here. I'll slow it down because uh, it goes through quite yep. quickly so if you come back here so this is the palm these are the flexor tendons here yes the finger and this is the nodule the little plaque like thing yeah yes now as you go through it that plaque blends with the skin and can you see the line of the skin is pinched yes so yes. it's the, the the surface of the skin is pinched as you yes. get on people with Jupitrons, they have a so so what's happening is that there's contracture within the the skin fascia. Yes. Uh in, in Jupitrons patients. And you get these these little because the palmar fascia goes everywhere. You think of it, or I think of it as a as this flat band that extends on from uh, palmaris longus yes. in the hand. But it actually breaks up as it goes. As uh, as you'll see, if you scan the foot, it's it's more obvious where you where the uh, plantar fascia goes because it's thicker but this also does the same and actually bits of it are going left right and center uh wrapping down round the flexor tendons attaching to the bones but it's also attached sending slips up that attach to the skin and that's we that's why you're 
your hand behaves the way it does and the skin behave, behaves the way it does. And when you get Jupiterums in that, you see these pattern of, so, so that band is coming from the skin there and then extending down into the layer of fascia here that you can barely see, but you'd, you'd see it if you were scanning live. Uh, you get these uh, these bands, that all these little nodule, uh, fibrous bands running through the, the palm of the hand, superficial to the extensor ten, uh, to the flexor tendons. And so you get that plaque. And I, I just like the way you can see it blending there with the skin, those yes. tiny little marks. I don't know how well they're showing on your thing, but that's, yes, no, I can that's see the it. end of it there. It, it, it shows the tethering or the puckering of, of the, the, the skin surface um, along with yeah. that. So it's yeah. um, the, the mechanism. It, it's like shooting out the the, the Spider Man's um, uh, whatever's yeah. as 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 it yeah. goes out to grab a hold of stuff. Yeah, so sometimes it's like that. Often you get it as as a little sort of just a, a, a plaque going up. I I, I have some images uh, somewhere else, though so they're they're rubbish to look at. Uh, but uh, but I actually pick it up often as as an odd lump on the side of the finger. So on, on something like a little finger, if you've got one that's being dragged back down and someone's got a lump there, yes, often yes, that yes. will be a band. And, and and these bands are attaching into, so that this might be coming off the, the palmar fascia and then going and attaching to the side of the uh, uh, the proximal uh, or the mid uh, phalanx. And that's causing the contracture and a little lump there. So the contracture is not in the palm where you normally see it, but yeah. you get it up in, in between the individual fingers as well. But because people aren't used to seeing it there, they're thinking, oh, no, it's some sort of ganglion and their finger's just not moving properly. Two things, John. It, it, uh, a number of times you have centered your comments in the actual skin when you said it shoots out from the skin to a location. Um, yeah. is, 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 uh, tell me a little bit more about that do, do you feel that it's not so much the the nodule shooting out to the skin to take hold but it's actually more well, of a skin-based issue or no, I, I think this is part of the intrinsic structure so it's not actually you you see it as you scan that's the feeling you get that it's it's shooting up to it so that's okay. that, that's just my way of visualizing it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The issue is actually these are these this is how we're put together you know gotcha. there are connections between the palmar fascia and and the skin that presumably is uh, involved in pulling around and getting your creases in your palm the second thing is the word plaque um the only time yeah. i have when when i hear plaque as as the little bit of scanning that i've done so far i see white inside of vessels and and, yeah. and i don't i don't know how it's used when it comes to um extrinsic collagen and will it show up Hypoechoic, or, or I'm, not, I'm not really thinking about it in those terms. Um, it's more as a physical description of of something that is, uh, you know, like a just a just a thickening, uh, but but some something fairly focal, but not a lump. I sometimes might use the word plaque. I'm not even sure whether I'm right to do that, but that's how I, you know, physically think of it as, you know, like like a bit of chewing gum stuck on the. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> On the on, on the pavement or so or, or it would be kind of like crud or 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 or, or gunk it, yeah it, it, or, it, but, it's... but something that is is i guess a part of something uh but not quite gotcha okay uh, you know but not not in not in the way a mass might be uh invading something uh inside something uh it's more more of that and so so let's see so there it is probably a bit clearer there, blending with the, the skin and then blending with the palma fascia. And I should eventually get into long section. That's what, and it characteristically has this fusiform appearance. Yes. You're not long. Are you, you're long now? I'm long on it. Yes. That's, okay. that's long on it. Let's see if I've got, if there's anything more to see. Yeah, that's, that's as good as it gets. That's me going through it there. Why is it darker? Darker. Um, my guess is that it's it's surrounded by this very fatty tissue, which is bright, okay. fatty, okay. fatty fibrous tissue in the palm, gotcha. and then the fibers are a probably because it's because the tissue is um, uh, perhaps swelling a little bit, so there might be a little bit more fluid in it, 
or it might just be that it's springier. You know, the, the ligam ligaments are often slightly darker than uh, than tendons because because the, the orientation within the internal architecture is is more is is less parallel. Yeah, yeah. Which gives you its flex its flexibility. You know, right, the, right, that, right. that that angulation within the intrinsic things. Those are the reasons I would put on it, but yeah. I haven't uh, I haven't read the his any histological justification for that. That's just my. I don't need to have that academic stuff. Whatever you say, John. Yeah. <laughs> now this is not quite sure what this is yes this is this is an odd one this is uh and you can see the image quality is not great this was a, a very arthritic hand so that's your flexor long oh, okay, I'm with you. okay yeah okay and it's just running through the palm looking abnormal and then you it you pass this unusual thing just here what on earth is that so, so we're talking is, the the the, so the this structure is, this that is looks cortical yeah yeah this is at the wrist you're coming past the wrist and then you've got that before it goes on its way into the hand into the uh, thumb yeah and it was like and and it's the sort of thing you go through and everything's a mess and you go, no, what's wrong with the tendon? And I was trying to figure out what's wrong with the tendon. I was thinking, what on earth is that? A dislocated lunate? Huh. Yeah. Just it's it just doesn't belong there. Right. Yeah. You know, next time you scan a wrist, just just remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> Flex so the polis is longer, sending it through there. Why is it resting against a bone there? Whoa. <laughs> the bone, right under the skin. Up above that is, is FCR? Uh, Plex carpi radius, somewhere around there, yes. Probably. Yeah. Whoa. But, but it, it was it, it just, so right out of the blue, you're thinking, oh, oh I'm, just, I'm just looking at a, an odd wrist, uh, a sort of worn out wrist with a, uh, 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 a, a mildly injured tendon. And then it was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're 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 we're, we're looking at, at apples, but there are pears in this bunch. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's distal to the carpal tunnel. I'm uh, sorry, that's no, proximal. I, that's proximal, proximal, proximal to the, to the carpal tunnel. Yeah, and you're probably just coming into the carpal tunnel there. That that that's and, pronator and then, uh, quadratus right down. The, yeah, okay, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, that's that, that's probably the uh, the the carpal. Uh, ligament there transcarpal ligament yeah wow that's is, just yeah. weird what 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 was functional was there pain or did, did they just say look i'm just glad to have fingers <laughs> yeah there was, there was some pain wow um, and that's my area of interest at the moment i'm just i spend a lot of time looking at the uh inferior capsule in the shoulder oh and how are you how are you getting the view I'm just patient puts the hand on the head and I put the probe in the armpit. Um, out of um, there's this lady um, out of, I think the same area as uh, where bird Stephen bird is coming out of. Uh, yeah. And she does a lot of this um, like uh, posterior and, and medial. So the arm is not even up in the air so much, but yeah, I think they but, do it like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just asked the patient to put the hand on the head. They're lying on their back, or they're sitting up. No, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm busy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the patient, the patient sits down, and I, and I scan them, and 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 at the end of the scan, they lift their arm up. They help it up if they need to. Yeah. They put it there. Most patients will get it there, unless they've got a really frozen shoulder, in which case you've got your diagnosis. But they can get it up there, and 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 you can see a reasonable view here. And I scan. I, I'd like to have you talk me. Across. Talk me through this like you're lecturing to me where your eyes go and 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 I'd like to hear what your thought process is because you you set this up with saying my my present shiny thing or or or, or I I don't I don't know what you words that you yeah. use but this is my an, an area of, I, I'm I'm particularly interested in the stiff shoulder at the moment that's yes. my uh, at the moment it's it's an area that I that I think is under on poorly understood and, and and things are missed in in a population in a section of the population 
So I'm paying a lot of attention to it. Talk, at the moment. talk me through structurally that on the left, is that the glenoid? This is the, this is the glenoid here. You don't always get that in this view, depending on how mobile the shoulder is, but you pretty much always can see, can get a view of, of this, which is the head and neck, essentially, of the uh, the humerus. Uh, and, and and you've got the capsule coming down through there and you've got the uh, uh, I think it's the is it the circumflex artery and auxiliary nerve is, is in this fatty layer here okay so coming through there which I don't spend a lot of time worrying about but just note that it's there and it sort of helps me define that plane that is the surface of the of the uh, uh, capsule so this this is capsule yeah, and you're looking down. for the thickness of the capsule as a function and of... And I know uh, some of our Australian colleagues measure it. I don't. I might look at the other side, and uh, it just offends me or it doesn't. <laughs> it, 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 it either is offensive or it's not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is this and, offensive? Uh, and, and, you know, yes. Yeah, well, offensive as in it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's thickened. Yeah, no, and, I hear uh, you. I this is one, this, twi this twi twice as thick, or is it fifty percent more? What, what do you? I don't know what normal is. You see, here. you see, this is it. I am. Um, I I scan. You know, I scan hundreds of shoulders. Yes. Uh, 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 probably sort of close to well, a hundred a hundred a month, and uh, uh, this is you know, I, and I just and I just look with my eye. Uh, we'll we'll get to numbers eventually. I'm just trying to get. Yeah. See a real sense of what is normal and what isn't normal. Yes. And uh, and, and and this is abnormal. Uh, and and people measure it and they measure it in different places. And I see a little bit of variety there. At the moment, I'm just trying to put it all together. And, and how does this get dictated, John? Would, would this be um, thickened um, capsule uh, assessed yep. through? Thickened, thickened inferior capsule. Okay. Uh, suggestive frozen shoulder. If if the patient's got loss of range of movement, uh, which they almost almost invariably have, they've almost invariably got uh, limited range of movement with that thickness. So not always, but almost always. Is this combined with CHL thickness or any kind of inf inflammation under the um, um, coracoacromial ligament? Uh, CHL ligament uh, is, I think, is is sometimes more specific sign. Okay, uh, but uh, when it's when it's abnormal, it's it's more abnormal, or more clearly abnormal. Okay. But it's not. But it, you don't see it as often. And I and my guess is that it is less reliably affected. I think I think the inferior capsule is more reliably affected in patients who present with frozen shoulder. Very good. Now, I'm just going to turn around and talk to my troops. Just if if I can, how how do I how do I uh, Mute. There we go. Okay. Are you are you back on the? Can you yep. hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm. Yeah. I'm I, 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 thank you so much for doing this, John. And I hate to disrupt your your no, your, no, your, your family time. It's it's fine. Uh, I I just uh, they should be in bed. <laughs> so so it's 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 not a matter of the, doing that. I just uh, obviously can't can't shout at them when you're. <laughs> <laughs> When there's a, when when there's a witness, so, <laughs> so anyway, what's uh, let me where are we up to? Yeah, this is great toe pisiform. Yeah, I'm not great. pisiform sesamoid. Yeah. Whoa! And I see abnormal sesamoids are really common. I have one, and they often look like this. So. It's again. It's not something that I think you can reliably call on ultrasound. All right. Because there are so many that are that are thickened anyway, and uh, uh, or not not thickened. Sorry, uh, that are that have this fractured appearance. Yeah. This had been struck, and that looks. They often have a a bifid, so this appearance up to here could be normal, but this is not. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and where are this one is? Oh, yes. You may not get this because uh, this was more you 
he picked it up. This was a patient with a swelling at the wrist. And I'd never come across it before. But you you know palmaris longus, palmaris longus. Yes, yes. Sometimes the muscle belly is at the other end. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I had to look it up because I was thinking, that's not right. And uh, and it was like In, instead of it being at the at the f common flexor bundle, it's yeah. down it's down at the bottom, like at overlying the, the uh, yeah. point to it. Listen. What? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And just you know, like you, they, they decided to locate the motor halfway between uh, the, the, the 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 cables. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's a known variant, but and 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 you can't really see it on there. But I just took a picture of it because I I just thought you know it's, <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen that before, or I haven't or I don't remember seeing it before. Yeah, probably one of those things I look up every five years, thinking, oh, I've never seen that before. And I just forgot. <laughs> it. Oh, that looks like a um, an extremity, like. Yeah, this is this is a metatarsal. This is a second okay. metatarsal, and it's just a bit unhappy. Oh wow, wow! Yeah. Uh, whoa! Yeah, and this is a an occult fracture. Yeah, you know, in in a metatarsal. Uh, wow. Bit of a step there. It's quite untidy. Yes. Uh, now this, hopefully. Now you have to excuse my poor quality scanning. That's the tendon, the black thing there. Yes. Is the tendon. Yes. And the and and you see the tendons resting against the bone there, and you can see the cartilage there, right up against the tendon. Uh, That's a plantar plate tear. Yes. I was just going to say that's the uh, me doing latchman's on the other side. So, so there's the tendon resting against the bone. There's the tendon resting against the bone. Yes. There's the the plantar plate, and, and there's the other end of the plantar plate. And again, the tendon resting against the bone. And there's me doing a latchman's on the other side. You know, I'm going to have to look up Latchman's. I'm assuming it, oh, it is. Oh, when you, a... Latchman's is, is your ACL test. That's what we call the ACL test. Okay, okay, I'm with you. So, so you're just so basically I just call, translating. I just call it the, the same thing. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm with you. You're, you're, you're just translating the, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the, the joint. I'm with you. Yeah, I just, I, what I do is <laughs> I, I put the probe very gently and delicately on the top of the joint. Of the uh, and I I do this with every second metatarsal I, I look at, so and then and then I roll my thumb. I've got I, I'm holding the toe like this, and I've got my thumb resting under the metatarsal head, and I and I, and I put pressure on it, and I pull upwards yes. while sliding my finger backwards. So I pull my finger to I, I slip back on the on the toe from the metatarsal head with this upward pressure. Yes, and that causes the latchman's while I'm scanning from the top. And you're viewing dorsally. Yes, yeah. So that's. Uh, and you do that on every second. Yeah, well, I I try to do all these things. I do, I try and do everything on every patient. Yeah. Just because, just to get that to make everything very fluid when you're looking at it, so it only wow. takes a second. Because that's you, I have busy lists, but I but because I do everything, I do every. All the interesting things on on every, like it's every elbow. I look at the uh, at the long uh, at the distal biceps because the distal biceps is tricky. But if you do it on every elbow you look at, then eventually even tricky things get easy. I want I want to be you, John. Well, come, come over and sit in on. Come and, I want come to and, be you. <laughs> come and do some do some lists in London. My land. There's, there's, so, there's so much work around. I'm sure someone would have you. <laughs> yes, the, the 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 poppers that 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 uh, that are on the street. Any 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 way of getting reps is the key. Yes, that is exactly it. That's that that that's how you 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 scan. Is you just you just scan everything. Every chance you get, you look at stuff. We're again looking at the plate. Yes. 
No, this is this is just a laceration, a recent laceration of the hand. So just having a look at at what at the damage done, where someone's cut their cut their hand open at work, and you just get all this soft tissue reaction around it. Fairly acute. Yeah, relatively acute, I think. Recent. Wow. I put it down on, in my notes, uh, and this is again another bit of. Uh, sort of slightly less acute. If I can get this to run. This is a, a sw the patient came uh, because they'd been the scan been requested. Eventually it will I'm not sure why. Oh there it is. Let me run it. So this patient came with a a swelling on their uh, thigh. But by the time they got to me the swelling had almost gone away, but they could still feel something. And so, why it is? I'm not sure why my computer is not. Must be finding it hard work. What's going on? Um, there we go. Now to grab it. Yeah. So if we stop it there, you see here, you've got that that residual the fat the muscle and then just that layer in between yes was this would have been if i'd scanned it earlier this would have been a big hematoma here okay. and it's just collapsed down and you've just got the the remains of that wall yes that, that if it had a bit more fluid in it you might call it a morel lavale lesion i was just going to say to you uh, but i didn't remember how to pronounce it <laughs> <laughs> so tibial sanitary wasting uh Right, I'm almost done. Nice. Right. This is posterior tibial. Posterior tibial, yeah. And um, so, tenosynovitis, but not not very inflamed. I don't know. No, there's a real bit going on there. Yeah. So a what bit going that? on in the lining. What was that hyperechoic uh, nodule in it? Was it just one of like a fabella? Um, whoa, there's a there's a nice ring. Now this is the, that's all just sort of uh, edema, and uh, you know you get differences in texture. Right. This is as much to do with the dark areas around it that will change the acoustic properties of uh, of an individual point. You don't, uh, the v values on ultrasound are not, uh, the pixel values are not absolutes because they're determined by the, uh, uh, or the, the reflectivity of any particular point it isn't just how any, it's intrinsic quality, but it's to do with how much moisture there is immediately above it. Man, you're talking some heavy, relevant stuff, John. That that a person who knows that doesn't get distracted by, you know, a, a, what looks like a you know a tree on fire in the forest, and, yeah. and just say, "Well, wait, that just doesn't happen." <laughs> yeah. So that so this is uh, so the tendon is thickened here. What yeah. is relevant is you know that little calcific that this little osteophyte here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you see that in in some of these old sort of ropey arthritic uh ankles sometimes yes. and sometimes it's specific to the uh tibialis posterior uh pathology and what have we got here this is we're talking of caracohumeral ligaments oh yes yes and this was an unusual one because i don't think this was abnormal uh, i don't think this was uh pathological this is just the patient's. It looks like a tendon there. Yes. Yeah. But uh, and the the shape of the uh, uh, coracohumeral ligament is, you know, very very variable by by its nature. But this is short axis yes. on the uh, on the coracoid here. Yes. So that's the origin of it. And then you're coming in short axis, and it's it's forming into this tendon like structure. Yes, coming down and blending into the cuff where I lose it, where it, it, it ceases to be in that plane. Wow, that's how that, that's valuable. And, and, then and, there and that, that's the it, it, we have the um, 
coracoacromial and coracohumeral, or or what is it? Coracohumeral uh, ligament. This is the one we're interested in. Yes. And this thing's are probably this is part of the plane of. I don't. That's possibly not the actual uh, ligament itself, coracochromial ligament. But that's okay. sort of the plane of it. We're probably slightly uh, off from it from it there, but it's wow. it'll be close to it and sort I've, of associated uh, tissue. I have not looked right. at the short axis on the coracohumeral. And this is a classic one from the movies, the old movies. <laughs> you, you, you mean where we have jumps? Uh, we, we don't have the, oh, the, have... the frame rates? No, where the Terry Thomas. This is, it's, it's, there's, it's so wide there. That you you can't even recognise it, but that's the uh, that's the gap between uh, scaphoid and lunate. Oh, okay, I'm with you. No, no, scaphoid, scaphoid and lunate, scaphoid lunate. Oh, ligament. extensor digitorum is is, is above it, and I'm with you. Oh, okay, I've got it. Yeah, that that is that extensor digitorum. I think, or, or yeah, that's probably extensor part of the extensor mechanism. Whoa. Your internet is unstable, it's saying. So we might be jumping about. All right. Something's not like there. there. Yeah. So that's yeah. Terry Tom what we call a Terry Thomas sign. I don't know. You know, where, where your teeth are wide. Oh, oh. it's it's when you when you x-ray the uh, the wrist, uh, yes. the space between scaphoid and the lunate, uh, yes. when that's widened, it's called a Terry Thomas sign because he was a, a 1940s actor. And he had a wide gap between his front teeth. I shall have to look him up, and it makes sense. The Terry yep. Thomas. So Terry Thomas. So, so I look at this yep. part of the wrist routinely, and uh, but normally it doesn't flop around like that. Do you have? No, uh, do you have them make a fist when you do that, or or do you? Do you I do, think do you... I think you're supposed to, but in in reality, you can see it quite nicely. Yeah. I just move the wrist side to side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get some. Uh, some movement there and changes in shape. Thank you for sharing your mind and your pictures and and your family in blur yeah. with, with me. Yeah.